All right. My name is Rajiv Pancholi. I'm part of the optical systems team at Broadcom. Well, let's get into it. Uh, do I use this to advance? Perfect. OK, I'm going to steal some of Nir's slides. Uh, he's presenting next week at PEC. So if you guys want more detail on kind of this, and he's really going to go into a lot of good stuff. So come and attend that. But I'm going to steal these from him because I think it frames where we are. So we started this uh, difference between scale up and scale out. And we arbitrarily drew a line uh, based on cost. And cost here is price per gig, power, latency. All right? And what NVIDIA did, thanks a lot and team, right? They created this electrical backplane. And now you have NVL 72, so you can move the scale up to in the rack. OK. Uh, that's great. What we see is that now, in order to move that even further, you, we need an optical backplane. Okay, so now with optics, CPO, one of them, uh, you can move your scale up to now in the row. All right, great. Why, why is that important? Okay, so uh, NVL 72, NVL 144, 64, 128. At some point, you need to grow your scale up, the single node scale up that you have for compute. And so in order to do that, you know, the, the copper goes away, and you can't have the reach and the amount of connect, interconnect that you need to connect, say, a hypothetical 1024 single node XPU scale up, right? So let's, let's look out in the future a little bit. So how would we do this? Uh, OK, so first we need a 200T switch, OK? Uh, we have you know, 25 tera uh, on each GPU. And now you can see with optics, I can have you know, 16 racks with 64 GPUs in there. I can have four racks of switches, 32 in each rack. And there you go. I have a 1024 single domain scale up. Uh, Fiber count is important, so we need to start looking at by die um, and a little bit more detail here on the rack. Okay. Okay, great. Optical backplane. Well, what, is, what does it actually mean? What does it look like? How are we going to do it? You can see some of the ideas here that we've we've done with some of our partners. Uh, you know, you need a fiber shuffle. You need kind of blind mate connectors. You need to worry about cooling and power. So this is stuff that we're uh, working closely uh, with the industry to develop. OK, so let's take that even further. All right, so now if I have half a million GPUs, uh, OK, how do I connect those? Well, today, with an electrical backplane, I need three tiers of scale out to connect all those GPUs. Three tiers of scale out means extra switching, extra power, extra latency, extra cost. Okay? With the optical backplane, now you can take that 1024, multiply by 500, and now you have a one tier scale out that's connecting half a million GPUs. All right, hopefully, you guys all were at ROM's uh, keynote yesterday, but that's scale up Ethernet. Now you can start to see look, I have a single protocol that goes from scale up to scale out, and it's Ethernet. Anyway, uh, attend Nier's talk next week. Uh, he'll have more detail. So where are we now? Uh, hopefully, you guys saw CMAX presentation in the morning. Uh, they were talking about uh, our Tomahawk 5 Bailey switch. That has a Tomahawk 5 in the middle. That you can see if I have a pointer. It's got eight 6.4T Bailey engines around it. Each of those engines is uh, FR4, OK? Uh, and you can kind of see the systems there. Last year, I presented a slide, this slide. You know, it was kind of like, look, CPO with integration, and you know, you don't have module connectors, you don't have, you know, maybe the dust is a little less, and you know, maybe the link flaps, you know, they should go down. Okay, well, Meta's data from this morning, this is uh, CMAX slide, uh, one million hours, no link flaps with CPO. Fantastic, right? 
that's pretty significant. We also presented on power last year. We said, hey, the box should be about 5.5 watts. And OK, Meta's data, 5.5 watts. 65% reduction over pluggables, retimed optics, and 35% over LPO. 100 gig per lane. So this is all 100 gig per lane, all right? What does all this mean? Like, let's, OK. This is the money slide, right? This is showing a 90% training efficiency improvement on a cluster of 24,000 GPUs based on the mean time between failures for CPO versus pluggables. OK, so we've been talking about CPO. You know, is it lower power? Is it lower cost? Is it reliable? Right? So I think we're getting to that. But this is now something different. This is now saving. You have all of these clusters running jobs. They're running. And all of a sudden, you have a link flap. So now everyone has to go back to the last checkpoint. So what did you just do with CPO? Now you've enabled those checkpoints and the training jobs to continue for a lot longer, making your cluster more efficient. Now, this is really one of the key values we see in CPO. OK, so uh, we, last week, we announced Tomahawk 6 Davison, the 200 gig per lane, 100 T CPO. Hopefully, you guys saw that announcement. We've been doing this for a while. Our Gen 1, uh, that was actually also 100 gig per lane. Uh, that was with a Tomahawk 4, something we called Humboldt. We had a small uh, deployment with Tencent. Um, you know, it was a lot of good learnings there. We learned operationally, you know, what's happening? How do you replace the laser, laser modules? What happens when, you know, the fiber connector goes bad? Used a lot of that into our Gen 2 with Bailey. That's the one uh, Meta presented on this morning that CMOC and Viral did a great job on. And then Davison, third generation. Fewer link flaps, better traffic, lower power. 102T, you can see Tomahawk 6 is in the middle. It's got 16 6.4 TDR Davison engines around it to utilize all the 512 radix from that switch. Partners, many more. This is a OCP, so we, uh, we're working closely with these that we've publicly announced, but also working together with many more partners. And again, we want a healthy ecosystem for CPO, right? This isn't going to happen with just Broadcom, right? It's going to take NVIDIA. It's going to take others, right? Contributions. Um, so you know, with our, our first generation and, and our second gen uh, with Bailey, we had a custom uh, laser source. It was a double high QSFPDD, uncooled. It was actually really great uh, engineering uh, work from the team. And that enabled us to you know, get to a point with shipments and, and, and getting systems out. But I think as, as we move forward and, and a lot more people are doing CPO, you know, we believe that that should be very standardized. We are moving to an ELSFP, uh, looking at liquid cooled. Uh, and so that can be something that you know, uh, even, even the module uh, machines that we have that are supporting all of the pluggables today, they can easily start making uh, ELSFPs. And then you guys saw the optical backplane. You guys saw in the chassis, there's fiber routing. You know, we're working with a lot of partners there to, to come up with solutions. And, and obviously, we want to contribute that uh, to the community. Additional information, check out our website. Go to CPO. Contact me. Thank you. Thank you, Rajiv. Um, Rajiv is always comfortable on stage, but now he's so comfortable, thanks to all the hard work of Meta. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's a lot of hard work from that. A lot of, it's not me, it's the team. Man. I'm just wondering, how much more comfortable can you get? Like, <laughs> five years from now, when you ship a million ports of CPO, it's going to be, you're just going to sit in a chair, smoke a cigar, and... I, look, I, I think it's, it's fun, and something that at least the team at, at Brock, we all believe in. I think it's, right. it's, it's, it's fun to be involved, well, right? Well-deserved. Please go ahead. Hi. Uh, I have a question about, uh, well, 
Uh, I think one of, one of the pushback to CPU, whether it's scale up or scale out, so one pushback is the manufacturing uh, capability. It's, uh, the manufacturing process is not so mature. Uh, there's a lot of like manual uh, manu process uh, involved. So, so my question would be like, where do you think we are uh, for the uh, manufacturing ecosystem, uh, how mature it is, and how mature it could be in the next like, two years? Uh, where, when do you think the, 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 manufacturing, the ecosystem could be mature enough so for CPO to gain like 20, 30% share? Yeah, great, thanks for that question. Uh, so, you know, it's going to take a lot of data, a lot more reliability, a lot more shipments for scale out before you can trust it for scale up, right? Once you go and scale up, that's, that link flap is very expensive, right? And so, so moving it from the scale out to the scale up, I think, is going to take a lot more work. But that development and stuff has to start now. Right. We have to start planning for it now because, as you know, these cycles, uh, <laughs> you know, there's a new GPU every, like, you know, couple years. And in order to meet that cycle, your timing has to be on. So, yes, we are ramping capacity. We need to improve, right, the amount of volume we can ship. And, and we're working to build all that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead. Oh, hi, Rajiv. Hey, nice uh, talk, you know. Thanks. Uh, last year I asked you a question. You said that's an unfair question. I said, um, <laughs> uh, and the question was, uh, if you can reduce the, the price by, as you had promised, like about 45%, uh, I understand many people are reluctant to be, you know, all tied into a single company for the total solution optics. Uh, are, you, uh, are you putting that offer out? Because I saw you, you know, you were very, you know, you were willing to take, you know, purchase orders, you know. Are you offering uh, the price such that it would be at, uh, 45, let's say, at, uh, because most of the solutions have 50% are copper and 50% are pluggable optics. How do you price your product uh, to compete with pluggable optics from a, from a price and cost? Sure, so first of all, we're not the only ones doing CPO. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, so there's gonna be a healthy uh, way that our customers can modulate pricing. Uh, you know, and I think to your second point, uh, how do we price it? Well, you saw some of that data on 90% training efficiency. Mm -hmm. So put the, like, how much did that just save a uh, data center? So you're right? not really willing to reduce the, the uh, Look, <laughs> <laughs> we're not going to comment on pricing, but look, I think the value of, of the system and I think the value of the technology is there, right? Okay. And now, uh, you know, what the benefit is to the data centers and to the operators, I mean, I think that there's, that's significant. Okay, thank you. All right, next question. A question about the um, copper stuff. I mean, you guys, I've seen presentation in the past where it's like there's gonna be this combination of CPO and CPC. I mean, does your package support both? I mean, could I put a co-packaged copper wire on there just as, just as much as I could put a CPO on there? Yeah, I mean, we work with our customers, right, and uh, what systems they want. Hypothetically, you could put down an engine on half of it, like our, our Humboldt, actually, that first generation one, we actually did half electrical, half optical. Right. So it had, you know, four engines, and then, you know, the rest was copper, right? So traces to the front panel. So you could envision if you need a half-half CPO, you know, half CPO, maybe half, you know, uh, something that you configure, yeah. I mean, if that's what the end customer really wants, and you know, we're and happy you, to support in your, that. In your architecture you've shown, do you see that happening, where you'll, have, you'll be selling a lot of switches that are just uh, you know, random assortments of copper and optics? I, I think Galad said, said it really well on the last talk. Um, you know, there's a use case for all optical CPO. There's a use case for pluggables. There's a use case for maybe a half-half solution. So it's just gonna depend on kind of, you know, what the need is on, on kind of the stack. Okay, thanks. Yeah, thanks. Go ahead. Uh, you showed a, a chart with your offerings from 2024 all the way to 2028. At what point is it, is the production transitioning completely to TSMC uh, for the pick and... Uh, uh, sorry, uh, could you repeat the rest of that? What part is it transferring where? To TSMC. Okay, so, so for Davison, uh, we are using Coop. 
Uh, so that's a process from TSMC to attach our EIC to the PIC. Uh, and so, so before you know, that it was non TSMC based solutions. Uh, before that, we had, you know, uh, most of our CMOS is done at TSMC, but we had other ways to do the pick and, and the attach um, that I think are public. You can look those up. Uh, but yeah, uh, with Davison, I think, you know, because we see the large volume ramp that we need to hit, it's nice to have TSMC as one of our partners. Thank you. All right, with that, let us thank Rajiv one more time. Thank you,